Jeff Cooper is a former Marine. He uses his Arizona ranch to teach willing students how to overcome the terrors they have found in the lives they lead, usually in cities. He teaches them how to shoot people. They come from all over to take his course, including some foreigners. They make the uncomfortable overland trip to get there, to fire on his ranges, and to listen to his lectures. done a lot of wandering in the woods, but I didn't have the feeling of being the patron that I have here. But um, it does give you a kind of a nice feeling to go to bed at night, close the door, and figure the only thing that can get you is the government. The firearms uh, laws and the general ambiente, the, the vibes in Arizona, are better for a shooter than they are anywhere else in the United States. The idea that a man uh, is somehow unusual because he shoots or wishes to shoot or enjoys shooting is foreign to Arizona. I've often been asked when people see a pistol, uh, you're wearing a gun, what are you scared of? And the answer is, of course, I'm not scared of anything now. <laughs> it always catches people aback. A kid from uh, Sports Illustrated came out to interview me at a big match we had up at uh, Vegas. and. Uh, his question was um, uh, the commonplace uh, trivium, uh, but Mr. Cooper, don't you think that violence begets violence? And the answer, which he did not expect, was, I sure hope so. is a means of stopping a fight that somebody else starts. It's a means of turning somebody off who's trying to kill you. <clears throat> in practically every case in which you will have to use a pistol for serious work, it will be because somebody is trying to kill you. And if he's trying to kill you, it is to your advantage to make him stop. And that is what we're talking about. Up! Look! Press down. Cock with your left thumb. See how that feels. Get some, yeah, yeah, get some pressure in there. You don't have to do that. You can leave it out there. But this hand should be a little farther back. Don't let it wipe all the way around to the front. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Drop this hand lower and farther back. Let's try that for a while. You're crowding yourself. So you're, you're jamming your thumb against your forefinger, and that's not going to do you any good. All right? That looks pretty good. Get some pressure in here so you're strong. Okay. All right, let's see you here. Point in. All right. Get out of the habit of coming up across the target. Come up and stop. Don't come up across and down. Got pressure in here. Pull in. That's it. You want to squeeze that, that rag dry in there. Want power in here. There you go. Okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> It's not a police academy, just a civilian course in shooting. The students are a doctor, a nurse, ready, a veterinarian, a pilot, a photographer, a college student taking the course for credit, and a couple on their honeymoon. We got married on the 24th, and we had another opportunity, but this is something we can do together that is enjoyable and is worthwhile spending our money on rather than laying on the beaches or, or gambling and coming home with memories. Now we'll come home with some skill. I live in a nicer area of town. I'm not apt to get mugged or robbed. However, um, I am a, a doctor, and I do uh, um, have a certain... Um, uh, amount of narcotics and things like that and and uh, i do, do deal in cash sometimes on my person but uh I, I think that overall i'm just like any other citizen with the same hazards going to the car in a, in a parking lot um, um things like that i live in a rapidly growing city and there's a rapidly growing crime rate and i feel the need 
of knowing the correct way how to use a weapon for self-defense. We've had a surprising number of clergymen. I mean, it surprises some people. Uh, a clergyman feels just as concerned about his own life and limb and that of his wife and his child and his house as anyone else. Here! Up! Look! Press! Down! Look! Press! And down! Lovely! Isn't that pretty? The challenge to kill a man is a very serious matter. We do not take it lightly. To point your pistol with the skill you already have at a man's chest and squeeze off and blow him away is a difficult thing to do. It's not easy. It is so difficult that a good many people simply die without making it. Shots below in the head are not very satisfactory. They may be pretty uh, unpleasant for the person hit, but they don't stop him. Now, if he's still there, if he's still shooting, if he's still deadly, if he's still trying to get you, hit him here. If we lived in a utopian society where there wasn't a lot of violence or there wasn't any violence, then I think it would be ridiculous to carry a weapon. It's a, it's a nasty, terrible world out there. Man himself is the most dangerous creature on the face of the earth. Paranoia. Paranoia is a mental aberration, a disease of the mind characterized by delusions of persecution. Well, I am under no delusions about being persecuted. I am not being persecuted, but I am certainly aware that people do run into conflict all the time. Now, I am probably safer here than I, anyone in the world. However, uh, I am certainly aware that the world is a dangerous place, and I am been teaching people how to meet that challenge, and that challenge is not a delusion. It's there. My stock and trade is defensive weaponry and uh, mercenary is attack. I have sufficient military experience and so do my staff to do a pretty good job if anybody asks us, but we don't do it and we haven't done it yet. Kind of funny. People come out here and say, I hear this is a mercenary training base. I said, oh? People get funny ideas. I haven't got anything against the mercenary trade, but I don't practice it. Except in the sense that I do what I do for money. But that could be, that's also true of the uh, garbage collector. Reload! Niederladen! Recharge! Entladen! Tell your priest downrange. Under pressure, you start going, tailing down into Patagonia there. That was my three-foot one up yeah. there. But these, these three down here are the ones I'm thinking about. Yeah. Every one of those, you lost your concentration and started grabbing. Uh -huh. You started wristing it. Yeah. That's great. Now, all we got to do is put a matchbook under your toe like that, see? Yep. And that'll get you up into the X-ray. <laughs> Mariana, that looks fine. That high one is okay. We, we, we would have got him anyway. Uh, history is almost the uh, account of man's wars, and I'm a history buff, and if you read history, you read about war, whether you like it or not. I happen to, rather to like it because I think it is a, a nexus of man's most powerful uh, drives, as Patton is said to have said, uh, watching a, an attack mass. Look, compared to that, every other human endeavor is trivial. Good many people assume that this monocle that you noticed is used for some kind of an effect. They also assume incorrectly that the British officers and German officers that they have seen wearing monocles were doing so because they wanted to create an effect. Well, possibly they did. I honestly say that, as far as I'm concerned, I don't do anything for the effect. So I carry this, and with that, I can read anything. In, I can read serial numbers. I can read the inscription on the pistol. Most of us, when we think of military music, uh, think of John Philip Sousa, which is good, and this is Zulu. And Zulus love to fight. Not only the men, but the women and children. You'll hear that too. This um, simulation of a live situation in both the field reaction course outdoor, the Donga, and then the indoor course, the front house, uh, teaches him to think about the use of his weapon in a live situation. Uh, 
When uh, Jupiter carries a thunderbolt in his hand, why, well, I, am, I am an inheritor of that legend. <laughs> no, I grew up with it. I think every boy does. Well, I don't say every boy. Every boy I ever knew did. The idea that you can point and your power rides right out of the end of your arm and touches that over there. In the United States, we have two different approximate notions about self-defense. But let's start out with the notion that you are morally entitled to save your own life. If you don't believe that, you wouldn't be signed up in this class. The decision on your part must be that this man must stop. Not how much you're going to hurt him, but how much he may hurt you. That's all. The attitude of what you do to him is almost irrelevant. That's the reason why we talk about stopping power, not killing power. We don't care if a pistol kills. It must stop. someone threatens an innocent person with lethal bodily harm and the threatened person spreads them all over the landscape, that's violent, but it's the, it's the proper and satisfactory conclusion. Those people pay Jeff Cooper $300 a week to teach them to shoot people. They also pay their own room and board and transportation and bring their own guns. And his course is sold out well in advance. Business for Cooper is just fine, thank you.